To begin this series, what we're going to do is focus on C-sharp. We're going to create a blank project. We're going to create an entity and then expose the properties of that entity to Sandbox itself. My name's Colin and I'm here with Philip. Hey guys. And we have quite a few things we want to cram into this first video, so I guess we can get to it. Yeah. First thing we're going to do is simply start a client engine launcher in order to create a new project. So let's do just that by pressing a new button here or create a project right here. Uh, switch to the C-sharp tab. Now decide where we want to put the project. Let's just make a new folder and call it Dank Sharp. Press OK and create the project. And that's it. Now you have your C Sharp project right here. And we can generate the solution right away in order to be able to build it in Visual Studio. Right. And once that's done, simply go to code and open the solution. Now this can be built right away. Just like that and that means that the dll has been output into the bin directory right here with all the references that it requires it can then be loaded by sandbox as specified by the cry plugin.csv file we're going to ignore that for a second and just start creating a new file right away for our entity let's name this my entity.cs Let's make it public and implement the entity component class. Now what an entity component is, is essentially an extension of logic for any entity in the level. What we want to do is also make sure that our entity is automatically registered as an entity class. Essentially what happens is this is exposed to sandbox, designers can create or drag this entity into the level and then an instance of our entity component right here is automatically added on top of that entity pretty straightforward and that's actually all we require so if we build quickly we'll see that it's succeeded try starting the sandbox load a level quickly oh that's a great one just reduce the height map, we don't really need anything special. And see that our entity is under my entity category. Now, there are no properties or any specific logic to this entity component at all, since it's completely blank. But this is all we need to get a blank entity in C Sharp, straight into Sandbox and the game. So just close Sandbox and look into entity properties. Now properties are pretty straightforward. All we need to do is use the entity property attribute on top of a public member of any primitive type. For example, we can say, yeah, let's do mass and compile. Then switch back, start this project. And it's all automatic. What will happen is that we start, we create a new instance of the entity component and it will detect the entity property and simply create a property for us right away. Not much to do there, really. So let's drag our entity in. And notice, hey, you got mass here right away. Pretty quick. Yeah, super simple. Now, what we can do is simply expand this. So let's keep. Let's actually remove this so we don't have backing fields, instead, adding our own fields. Just go mass here. And then we expose this to a function with a setter and a getter. So we do it. I don't want that. Let's simply say underscore mass equals the value that's passed in and then get simply returns underscore mass now this is if you're familiar with back in fields exactly the equivalent of what we had before which was let's see here public will mass get set this becomes pretty much the same code. Whenever you write this in C-sharp, it generates a backing field and then automatically returns and sets that. But what we want to do is add a reset function in order for us to be able to, for example, set geometry and reset physics whenever we're interested in that. 
okay, let's call that. Let's also add another property for the geometry. Now for the geometry, we can actually change the entity property type. Since it is a string, we might want to do some changes in order to allow people to select objects. And we do this using the first uh, parameter in this attribute, simply saying, yeah, we want to use the object enumeration, which does exactly what I said before, adding a file browser for objects. Now let's add a property here, call it geometry. Turn geometry here and then add a setter where we set geometry to the value and also call it reset. Pretty straightforward. Then what we want to do is simply use the entity uh, member or property actually and simply load the geometry. And we do this in the first slot and simply pass in the geometry that we set right here. What we can do at the end is also physicalize it. So we get the entity, get physics on top of that, and call physicalize. All we then we need to do is use this version of the, uh, the function, pass in mass, and specify the physicalization type. In our case, we want it to be rigid since we want the object to actually fall down. Pretty straightforward. And we just compile, start sandbox, and simply drag in our entity and there we go. We have both mass and geometry with an object selector. Now if we select any object here, we'll see that it loads straight away. Drag it up a bit, set a mass and play. There we go, false the ground. Nice. That's all we need to do. So this code is pretty much all that's necessary in order to have properties, an entity component, an entity class, uh, and also have some logic for loading geometry and physicalizing it. That's it. Well, thank you for the nice little lesson, Phil. And I think that wraps up this video. So we'll see where we can take it from here. Yeah.